Welcome to another edition of the Dental Today podcast. Thank you for stopping by. This is brought to you by Lab Media TV. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and here we go. Remember to follow us on social media at Lab Media TV. Ashley Henderson began her dental career as a registered dental assistant. Shortly after, she was invited to be part of a dental laboratory, which she fell in love with. Fast forward, she is now changing lives as she is dedicated to her passion now as a dental technician. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Ashley Henderson from Tennessee. Ashley, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am fantastic as usual and very excited to have you on the show I saw some of your work on Instagram, amazing work. And the, the most amazing thing to me is that you've, you've been a denturist for only about four and a half years. Is that right? Um, that is correct. Yes. Wow. And, and so uh, four and a half years and you're already producing phenomenal work. How in the world did you get into this whole dental, uh, dental community, dental world, dental industry? Um, okay. So in... Well, when, ever since I was younger, I've always uh, been really fascinated with teeth. Uh, my grandfather used to pop his teeth out at me, which, you know, was kind of like, you know, ew, when you're younger. But then you're like, hey, wait a minute, what is that? Um, you know, because you, you feel your own teeth and you're like, they don't move. Um, and then, uh, you know, I kind of went to school for English for a little bit and veered off from that and sorry about that and um in 2015 i went to dental assisting school where i received my rda uh very briefly did oral surgery but there was a lot of blood for me so (laughs) veered away from that a little bit um and then i went to an orthodontic lab where i made uh bleaching trays and you know remote retainers and then i met someone who had brought me to a company to train me to be a lab technician And I can honestly say ever since I was in school to be a dental assistant, I was always like, when I got in the lab, I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Can you do this for a living? Like, it literally is a dream job. Like, art, making art and helping people along the way is just the best feeling in the world. So uh, allow me to back up here. You you mentioned that the fascination began with with the appliance that your father, your grandfather was, was showing you as a child. At first, obviously, the, the, the first impression is a little weird, and then uh, interest was sparked. But you mentioned that you were you, you went into school for for English, or you started yes. a little bit into English. What happened uh, in, in in the dental world, or what actually brought you into dent into the dental world, or inspired you to switch over from English into this uh, new field? Um. Kind of seeking a challenge. Um, when I went to school for English, I found myself not not exactly being challenged. Um, and then also for my love of art, I just like to be hands on and like making things and being crafty is kind of in my blood. So I just just went for it, you know, shot in the dark. Wow. So it was more so the the. Uh the progression of your development, like understanding who you were as a person and not right. following, fo- following through with something that wasn't aligning to your, uh, to, to whatever it is that you were thinking at the moment. How, if I may ask, uh, was that shortly after uh, uh, high school? Was that a, a little bit far along? Um, okay. So I graduated high school in 2011. Um, and then I went to a community college here where I was going to pursue English and then, you know, things happen along the way. Uh, I do have three beautiful babies. So, um, when I was pregnant with my second, I put myself through school, you know, better life, stable career. Um, and then I just kind of fell in love with it and it just took me down a, a path that really settled me at where I feel like I should have been. Wow, that's that's very interesting. Now, when when you were sharing the the experience and, and going through through the school program and, and going into ortho, you, you did mention that it, it was too much blood. What was your first impression? Oh, well, uh, my first <laughs> surgery. Let's see. Uh, my first full mouth. Um, I got lightheaded. I said, hey, doc, uh, I'm feeling lightheaded. You know, I was uh, the third assist or the second assistant. So 
Um, she sat me down in front of a fan with crackers and water and a wet towel. And she's like, it's okay. Um, it happens, you know, everybody's first big surgery. And I was just like, oh, it was just so overwhelming. I was like, I don't know if I could do this on a daily. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> it was pretty brutal, yeah. yeah. Just wow. all so the blood in, and then the smell of the blood, you know. Right. You have to get accustomed to that <clears throat> for sure. And it just wasn't wasn't for you. Was it just not? Yeah, no. Super interested, like highly interested. I thought it was so cool, like all the procedures I was able to see and all the things that they did for people. It was great, um, but it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Ma makes sense. Uh, that 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 is certainly um, from from seeing it in a book and then uh, actually. Uh, <laughs> being in someone's mouth and seeing everything that that must be quite the quite the experience and so uh you, you started getting into the ortho and into an ortho lab and, and and all this but but the leap from from there into a dental technician how did that happen and 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 what really clicked um I think it was mostly a lot of persuasion because when I was at work, I worked with someone who um, was a lab, like a denture technician as well. Um, that was just like his part time thing at the orthodontic lab. And, you know, he was looking at my work and he was like, hey, um, you know, kind of telling me about his trade and stuff. And he's like, I think you would be really good at this. And I was like, eh, I don't know. You know, when you get really comfortable where you are and you're just like, OK. And then I kind of had to tell myself, um, well, we're just going to take take a leap of faith. We're just going to try and go for it. So I did. And it's, it's definitely been a, a challenge, but without a struggle, there can't be progress. So, um, it's just, you learn something every day, you know, and I'm happy where I am for sure. So for when sure. you took that, that leap of, of faith, if, if, if we could call it that, uh, w what was the moment or when was that point where you decided, okay, this is me. This is it. Um, probably like just from the get go, being able to have my hands on things and being able to create things out of nothing. Um, wow. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So it was awesome. it was the love at, at first at first um, at first stroke or <laughs> whatever, whatever well. <laughs> process you were doing at the first time. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when I was in um, dental assisting school, when I was in the lab, like, I was like, man, like, what is this job? Like, do people get to do just this for a living? Because, you know, they tell you uh, your things will be sent to a lab and they teach you a little bit of things just to like, you never know what atmosphere you're going to be put in um, just to, you know, have you learn like the impression part and stuff. And I was like, I could see myself doing something like this for a living. But at the time, I wasn't super educated on what that was. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that having that, like that basic part of dental assisting has really helped with me transition, transitioning into where I am now, because I was already familiar with like the tooth numbers, the anatomy, um, you know, how things look. Um, yeah. So, so having the background and, and actually going to school and everything obviously gave you the foundation for the the uh, the concepts and the ideas getting into the getting into the um, the other side of the business or the industry which is amazing now it's it's interesting when you mentioned that that you you began to see the lab atmosphere and everything so that was conditioning you and 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 ordering your steps was taunting to, me <laughs> to, to where <laughs> when the moment came in you just uh, hit the floor running that is so so amazing. Now, uh, every dental technician encounters certain challenges when getting started and even in their development and, and getting involved, like, for example, in, in the last uh, uh, 20 years, 15 years, uh, the, the analog and the digital and so much development that has uh, go gone on in the last, uh, really, every single year, we, we're seeing new things and new processes and everything just popping out very quickly. What would you say was your, your greatest challenge in making the adjustment as a dental technician and how did you overcome it let's see okay from the get-go um when i was in my training and learning um i did like six months of training and then was just kind of thrown out to the wolves uh i traveled a lot 
and within having a family that was very, very tough because you have to be gone a lot, but at the same time, you have to have that support system where you're able to have that balance to, you know, if you really want it, you got to go for it, you know? So traveling around a lot, um, I never really had any issues working with other people. I've worked with a lot of people and they've all been super nice and super helpful. And I just try to absorb everything I can from anyone that I work with, you know? Um, there's so many different techniques. Uh, I can honestly say that I am super grateful to be able to have been a part of the era where we do fabricate everything by hand because um, futuristically we probably will be transitioning, you know, later on to those high technologies where um, you're going to be putting it in the computer or whatever, and it's going to be doing it for you. Uh, when I was at the orthodontic lab, I did have a chance to see, um, like the 3D machines and stuff and how they work. And I thought that was very cool. Um, definitely interested in soaking up anything I can, you know. I love to stay on the top of things, you know, know what's going on, what where things may be headed. Um, I've just recently started to learn about flexibles, uh, Valplast. So right now that's a struggle for me. Um, <laughs> Figuring out how to perfect uh, finishing those, you know, um, really stoked to be doing them. And that's what I'm starting to, like, learn uh, all about right now. Like, I've worked with them where labs have sent them to us and you just adjust on them. And I remember, like, how much of a headache that was for me. But um, now I'm just educating myself and what tools and, you know, things to get to better myself at finishing those and, you know, just pretty much fabricating them as a whole. So... Oh, that's that's fantastic! That. And so uh, you you uh, you begin to to feel or get into your groove when it comes to mm -hmm. the lab, and you begin to post on Instagram. <laughs> what was that like when you first started posting your work? Um, you know, my coworker, uh, she actually is the one who was like, "Hey, you know, you should get an Instagram, put your work on it," because she did as well. And at first I was super apprehensive. I was like, oh, you know, I don't know. And I'm super down for constructive criticism. Like anything you can tell me or show me to make my life easier or to even just help me out, I'm so grateful for. Um, and there are so many people to look up to on the platform because there's oh, yeah. amazing artists out there from like all over the world. I'm just like in awe. I'm like, oh, but like, you know, with time, you'll get better. You know, and especially if you strive for things and you want them, um, all you can do is trial and error, you know. Um, but so, yeah, when I first started posting my work, um, just the reactions that I was getting in general was just so amazing. Like being able to have that that power to put something out there and have someone give you their opinion on it or, you know, vice versa is so amazing. Like we it's so easy for us to connect. And I love that. And I love to see the twist that other countries put on their things. And I'm just like, oh, it's so amazing. It's so good. <laughs> like, <laughs> I look at mine. I'm like, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, it's that's, great. It's a new world. It's, it it's, is. It's, it's, it's a new world, really. For sure. For sure. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's certainly and social media has certainly brought forth a, a different element to to the world. I think it connects us and allows us to share and ultimately improve on on what we're doing on on so many levels. But one thing that is 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 still very um, very amazing to me that that you you call you call what you do art and you call those who work in the industry artists more than anything. So that that is that is uh, amazing to me. Why why have you decided to call it art more than you know a, a dental uh, appliance or or yourself an artist over dental technician? Um, that's a great question. Art draws people in. Art is a vision. And when you are starting with some of these cases that you look at them and you're like, how am I going to do this? That is the artist using their vision to help someone out and make them feel better about themselves. I mean, 98% of the time, I feel like, um, you know, you talk to people, you look at people's faces and what do you see? Like, obviously you see their smile, 
And um, for someone to have the power of not being able to smile taking away from them and then being able to give that back to them, you know, that is art. <laughs> like, um, you know, just another word for me is art because I love what I do. And I, I honestly, each and every case that I work on, I put the same amount of effort and and love into everything that I do. Like, I honestly will look at it and be like, if I won't put this in my own mouth, it's not okay to go to the patient. It doesn't matter how much money they're spending. I want to make sure these people get what they pay for and feel great about it. Like, 100%. (laughs) That's very powerful. The the term you used was was very, very powerful, and it was vision. And Mm -hmm. and it's it's something that I believe... uh, Every every industry should should strive for. I mean, and profits are definitely important in a business because that's how we all feed our families. But mm-hmm. uh, vision, uh, being able to to envision success and success in this case is making sure that a person can uh, uh, resume their life in a normal way uh, is is a very very powerful statement. Vision. Wow, I I, I don't think I have I had ever heard it uh, that way. Uh, before and I, I and I, I appreciate the way you 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 share that. That was so I feel that was, that was amazing. So passionate about what I do, like so passionate and so grateful that um, I can call this a job. Like I get to wake up every day and enjoy what I do. Like what? Everybody should wake up and enjoy what they do. You know, like you should really find what what sets you off in life. What makes you strive to be a better person, you know, and just be happy. So you, you have three children. You are, you're, mm-hmm. you are uh, striving in your industry and you're even, again, as you just mentioned, learning more things and developing your, your, your craft and improving on your craft. Uh, where do you find the balance? Oh, the balance. Okay. <laughs> um, well, since I have, uh, started at a new company because I moved back from uh, North Carolina a year ago and I was in North Carolina for a year. Um, I'm at a company that's very laid back and it's not as stressful. And so that's great for me. And the fact that I don't have to travel anymore, like I can have that time when I get home with my kids. And like I said, having, having a great support system at home is everything, especially if you do have kids, like you have to have that support and understanding and make your own balance to when you leave work, um, you know, leave work at work. And when you're at home, just thrive, you know, when you're with your family, that's, that's your family time. You, you know, like, just like when you leave the house, you leave that at the door, you're going to work. Like you have to put that in your head and make that almost like a priority. Like to me, family will always come first, but my job is, very important to me as well like it's my passion it's my art so that's what you that's one of the things that keeps you going of course because that, mm-hmm. that there there are dividends that pay that are much higher than 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 a job uh, uh, you did mention the opportunity of changing people's lives through art mm-hmm. yeah and so what was your first experience uh, or and let me ask this first have you been able to see your work in people's mouths already? Uh, That is a great question. So um, coming from where I came from, when I first started out, I was working in a lab and in in offices. So uh, working alongside doctors, I can honestly say was great for me in training um, because I ask a lot of questions. Uh, I definitely love to get the doctor's perspective. Like, you know, if I'm looking at a case and I feel like, you know, I want to set it one way, but I'm kind of struggling in my head with the vision on it. I'll be like, Hey doc, do you, um, do you have any opinions on this? You know, this is what I want to do with this. What do you think? You know, um, do you have anything that you might want to add in there? Like getting the doctor's opinion. And then on top of like being able to see your work in the mouth makes it 10 times easier to, you know, get it almost exactly the way that you want it. Like, uh, it can be a struggle when you're not on side, especially for wax tries. Um, for the ones that are really tricky, because dentures can be, a, it's a guessing game, you know, you just, you're trying to trial and error until you get it right. And at first it's not going to be easy, but like I said, w- like without a struggle, there can't be progress. There's still cases that, that stump me and, you know, I'm still learning, but 
uh, being able to see my work in patients' mouth was everything to me because, like, you just get to see their reaction and how happy they are. And every time they cry, I cry. So I'm almost having to, like, peek out the corner because I don't want to just be bawling. But at the same time, I want to go in there and just give them a hug because I'm so happy for them, you know, because they're so happy. And you're just like, oh, it makes you feel so good. Um, What was your first experience like? Oh, uh, I bawled like a baby. Um, I had a lady who was a former addict and um, she hadn't had teeth in a very long time. And uh, why the, another reason why I say it's art is because people will bring in pictures of them when they were younger, and, you know, want teeth kind of like they used to have. So like you're taking a picture and trying to make it, you know, almost like replicated um, in the mouth. And then I just remember she lived really far away. She couldn't come to very many um, visits. So they tried to do it as quick as possible to, um, you know, pertain to her needs. So um, I, I'll never forget the day that we delivered it. She just like sat in the chair and, and looked at them and she said, oh my God. And she just started crying. And then I started crying and she loved them so much. And I'm like, just to be able to give that power back to someone like, it was so amazing. So amazing. Wow. Did, did you ever think it was going to be as impactful as that? No, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I, I don't know. You just get the feels, you know, when you're really, really excited about something and someone's really excited about it, too. It's just it, it's so powerful. Like, you never know how that appointment's going to go. Like, you think it's going to go one way and it could go a completely different direction. Um, so really just being in the moment. It was just so great. So, so great. It's amazing. It's amazing that you mentioned that you have the opportunity to work directly with doctors and you were able to see your work in the mouth. Obviously, uh, you're able to uh, work on a more efficient level because you're 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 seeing it there and you know what you need to do or, you know, it it all all tells you what you need to do. But uh, it's interesting that there are so many dental uh, professional dental technician professionals that haven't had the opportunity that you've had. Uh, because they, they've worked in a lab that has not been um, anywhere near the, the, the clinic or the doctors or, or everything. Now, have you ever or are you working now away from doctors or have you already experienced that separation from the doctor and, and, and dental technician setting? Uh, yes, I have uh, three and a half. Well, about three years, I would say, um, working alongside doctors and I've met a lot and there's some very, very smart people out there and they have been great. Um, but now I do work at, um, just like a, a bit, like just a lab where we have private doctors and they send work in and, and, um, we also do a lot of work for the prisons too. And I can honestly say that makes me feel great too, because when I get done, like with one of them cases, I look at it, I'm like, man, these dentures are banging. Like (laughs) they're going (laughs) to love them. I was like, these, these are so good. It just makes me so happy. Like I said, um, um, I take like the same amount of love and passion on each and every patient. Um, it doesn't matter who they are. It's just, like I said, if I wouldn't put it in my mouth, I, I don't, I'm so meticulous that I can't stop picking at it. That's my problem. I have to learn when to just stop and leave it be. And um, like you said, yeah, like working alongside doctors, being able to see your work and where you need to make adjustments. That's awesome. Um, I'm having to learn how to call the doctors and uh, discuss it and visualize it from what they're telling me with their words over the phone and, you know, reading the scripts and, you know, you have to be very thorough when you're not working alongside the doctor because there's not that extra person that's going to be reminding you of anything. If even that, you know, you have to, it's, you have to really take into consideration and perceive what they're telling you in your mind and try to give them what they want, like what they're asking for um, or what the patient's needs are. So, so, even, so even that is becoming a, a, uh, a platform for growth, learning how to interpret. It is. Yes, that's a good word. Searching for that word. But yes, and learning how to uh, inter- interpret how, how things should be <laughs> so so you mentioned that you're taking on different doctors and and, and different uh 
different uh, different clinics. How do you interpret from different doctors? How, how do you manage the terminology that one doctor uses, or one way a doctor may may call one thing? And how, how do you how have you been able to manage that part? Oh, that's a great question. I love it. I love that not every doctor is the same. Um, you know, they all request different things, um, and they all call things uh, like like the fabrication processes different names. And I feel like it just expands my mind. Um, just seeing, um, I guess, like the different ways that they um, they write their scripts. You know, and they have different kinds of patients. Like they, their patients want different things, and you know, some doctors like it basic, and some like it with a lot of detail. And I feel like I get the both the best worlds on that. Um, I feel like working with a lot of different doctors definitely challenges me on every aspect of the lab because someone's always going to be asking for something different. Um, we don't exactly do everything where we are. You know, we do dentures and partials and, you know, all that good jazz. And now that we're doing the flexibles, I'm so stoked. Like, I feel like those things are just so amazing. And that's where, that's where I'm learning to grow at now. I'm ready to expand my mind within, within those. So that's, that's pretty much what you're doing now. You're, you're developing yourself even on another uh, on another appliance that goes yep. in the mouth. That's that is exciting. And what are you looking to do in the future? What are you interested in learning, getting involved in, or possibly that you're already working on now that you haven't disclosed yet on Instagram? Um, that's a great question. Hmm. What am I working? Well, yeah, the, the flexibles. I don't want to be overly repetitive, uh, but that is my main goal right now is to try to perfect that within all the other things that are thrown at me. Um, obviously humble myself a lot to learn everything I can from others, even doctors, um, to better myself because, you know, I don't feel like anyone's ever 100% perfected things. Cause you can always do better. You can always be better. You can always find better ways, um, to go about things. And you just, you learn throughout this whole, whole process. Like every day, I feel like I can honestly say I learned something new. And that's great. That keeps my mind going. It keeps me challenged. And it, it keeps me interested. It's not the same thing every day. Not every day is going to be the same. And I love it. I love that. That's, that's a very, very, very powerful statement. And um, being able, as you mentioned, to do art and do it for a living and, and change people's lives and, and be satisfied with it. I think that's, that's, that's a powerful, powerful place to be. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ashley Henderson, please follow her on her Instagram <laughs> on here on the screen. If you're listening on the podcast, go to the links below. You'll be able to find her information there. Will you'll be able to find her? Ashley, it's been fantastic having you on the show. Uh, I am looking forward to meeting you in person in Chicago next year. Ooh, now, yes, sir. Uh, Chicago is usually in February, but due to this whole COVID thing, they've changed it to the summer. So we won't have to worry about all that cold and all that wind. So we'll be able to have an even better time maybe in Chicago. So I look forward to meeting you there in person. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me and for anybody who's been. Been an honor have, it's been an honor having you on, Ashley. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Miss 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 Ashley Henderson. Go follow her, support her, ladies and gentlemen, till next time.